Hello, hello. Welcome, everyone. Not sure how many people we have in here. I'm going live today via mobile because I want to be able to walk around and show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, there it goes. Tells me how many are in. A couple people are in. Uh, thank you, Sandy, for sharing this out to uh, YouTube. Appreciate that. Um, all the people we can reach, the better. And uh, yeah, I... To be honest, I don't do scheduled live streams. I just do live streams when I have something I want to show. Um, I don't like doing live streams just to just to chit chat and uh, whatnot. Uh, because I, I like to have a purpose of of my live stream, and I'm not knocking any live streams whatsoever. Just if I'm going to devote my time to it, I want to have something we can fall back on and look at and. Uh, and uh, use it for for future resource if we need to oh awesome sandy thank you uh yeah i wasn't sure how good the the video and audio would be off of my phone here but uh hey we're, we'll give it a shot it's nicer at the computer i can type i can do all kinds of other stuff but uh and i'm i'm very limited with this but uh we'll do the best we can with it because i think we have some Really cool stuff to show today. Hello, uh, NZ. Hello, how are you? Good to see you. Thanks for coming out. Uh, yeah, so uh, we're gonna do this. So, what I've in the past, I don't know. I'm gonna say few months. I've had a lot of people approach me, and and I've seen a lot of questions on social media, uh, Facebook, whatnot, about how to raise brine shrimp to adult size. A lot of people do brine shrimp uh, just to babies, just to baby brine shrimp. Still have yolk sacs on them and feed them to the fish. I actually have some ready today. We're gonna feed some of that as well to some of the fish that are way too small for adult brine shrimp. Um, so it's basically gonna be like a, a fish room feeding, um, but we're gonna be doing it with live brine shrimp that I have cultured I'll show you how I've cultured it. Uh, not saying it's the right way whatsoever. I honestly just threw this together and just started doing it. I think it actually started by accident when I must have just got some brine shrimp eggs in this tank by accident. So I started feeding it, and now I have a routine where it's actually sustainable. And I've been feeding most of my adult pairs and sub-adult pairs of clownfish uh, live brine shrimp on almost a daily basis i skip a day once in a while but uh, generally a daily basis and i've been able to do, raise enough to be able to do that uh and z asked uh, does adult brine shrimp have benefits to clownfish breeding or are baby brine shrimp enough for breeding so that's a fantastic question let's see if i can figure out how to put it up here there we go so, hey, Jason, good to see you. Good to see you. Thanks for coming out. This, yeah, this could be a benefit to you at your shop as well, Jason. Um, anybody who doesn't know, Jason is a uh, redfish, bluefish, and, and uh, he's opened up a, a shop in the States. And uh, he does some incredibly cool fish. He's bringing in some incredibly cool fish and making them available for you all. So, uh, check him out. Uh, love supporting a new fish store coming up that's why i still wear a tropical gems hat as well um but back to this question i don't know is my answer but i'm trying i'm seeing if it does have any benefit um one thing i do know is they really love eating it that's one thing i do know um, and since I've been doing this for the last uh, couple of weeks, I, I have noticed a lot more activity, um, cleaning pots, whatnot, a bit more growth on some of the younger pairs. So uh, I do believe it's beneficial. Uh, part of it being benefit, part of it, sorry, in order for it to be beneficial, I think it really depends on what you feed the brine shrimp because the brine shrimp don't have a lot of natural nutrients to them, even as adults. There's not a whole lot of 
sustenance to them. Uh, so it depends what you feed them. They need to be gut loaded. So I've been gut loading mine with RG Complete from Reed Mario Culture and uh, Spirulina uh, Algae Powder. And uh, you can tell when they're gut loaded, they have like a vein going through them, like a poop vein, I guess. And when it's full, you know that they've been eating. So, so they do have some nutritional value to them. Oh, hey, Jason. Um, what a treat. I've been looking for you, pal. Always fantastic advice and educational contact from Jan Aquarium. Well, thank you, Jason. I appreciate that. Appreciate that. So, I guess without further ado, we will, uh, let's start moving. I'll get on the plug here. I've been trying to keep lots of power. We'll get moving to uh, the area where I've been doing all this. So what I'm going to do actually oop, is I'm going to uh, try and flip the camera around. There we go. Here's my coach. It's all seen that. Got a pretty cool view from the coach. Coach looks at a really nice 180 gallon planted tank oh remind me i got something to show you guys as well if you're into planted tanks gets pretty cool so here's like my my like live food area this light stays on 24 hours a day um i have buckets down here for rotifers uh copepods um you got this bucket here it's a bit of a mess I don't know if you can see all those adult brine shrimps swimming around there. They actually have been depositing uh, uh, eggs in here. So that's pretty cool. They're actually living long enough. And I believe, I, I really, to be honest, you can see there's a, a good vein going through them and they're fed. Feed them. I just let the, uh, they just, algae that's been growing there. I've had this set up for about three weeks. I don't touch it. I take a few out of it once in a while. But they've been actually reproducing on their own. But this actually isn't the system that is sustainable for me. Uh, this was just something that just happened. They just appeared in there, to be honest. And I was like, eh, well, let's see what happens if I just leave it alone. It's not hurting nothing. And uh, that's what's been happening. Here's our baby brine that's uh, ready to be harvested. I have a lot of really small fish that uh, this is really beneficial to them. The baby brine shrimp, but it still has a yolk sac when it's orange like that. Deep, deep, deep orange. That's really good for, for young, young fish. They gobble it. It's almost like force feeding them because they just love eating it so much. Stay tuned and during this live stream, I'm gonna show you me feeding those to really small um, clownfish babies. And, uh, and the amount I feed them, you're going to be astonished, and they will eat up every last one of them. So that is actually part of my sustainability. Because without that, I wouldn't keep this going. And everybody can look at this and say, that looks pretty disgusting and gross and whatnot. And it is. But that's actually just green water. And uh, I'm getting to your uh, question here, sir. Um, if I feed algae, and if so, how much? I like to keep really green water, really green water. And that's uh, spirulina powder. Right here. And it's RG complete. So my green water here is not actually live phytoplankton. I haven't done phytoplankton for a while. I do have some F2 fertilizer uh, here. Uh, and I have done a lot of phytoplankton. I just haven't done any recently. 
And when I do phytoplankton, basically uh, what I do is it's got, actually, I follow the instructions is what I do. And it's uh, 0.5 milliliters for one milliliter of uh, phytoplankton water. And that worked really, really well while I was doing it. This is also really handy to have uh, if you do have a fish room and you're doing a lot of this kind of stuff. This is what that water mainly is. Uh, it's RG complete. Uh, I've been buying it in the huge jugs like so. But uh, you can get it in jugs like this as well. And a little bit smaller, actually, you can get it. But this is what is in this water as well. I don't know how well you can see through this camera. But there's a lot of adult brine shrimp in here. A lot. There's eggs. There's adults. They're all over the place. So when I harvest my brine shrimp, my baby brine shrimp from here, what I do is I actually just take out a few squirts of the water with some of the baby brine shrimp in it. Um, and when I say some, maybe a few hundred. And I simply squirt them into this tank and uh, let them grow. Um, for this setup, these guys are not particular at all. It's so, so easy. So, so easy. Like these guys will take uh, a salinity between like 10, uh, 20 and uh, 1035, like they don't care. They absolutely don't care. As long as you can keep the ammonia knocked down, you'll be laughing. I do dose it with Prime almost daily, uh, just because there is no filter in here, obviously. And we want to make sure we keep the ammonia down and do some water changes on it. Not overly frequently. So that's that's how we set this up. And like I said, I just set this up just to see. See for myself, lots of people asking me. And asking everybody in particular, like no one in particular, how to do it. So I figured, well, why don't I just figure out how to do it? So that's what we did. So we're going to feed some fish. We're going to feed some fish. So uh, we'll probably start with these guys. This is a future spawning clownfish pair. So we'll feed them some. Here's a pair that spawned for me once, but I haven't got them to spawn again. But uh, I'm guessing they're going to go just about any time. And then I have several young pairs here, uh, mostly my own breeding. Uh, this is uh, actually one from somebody else and one from my breeding. And the rest here are basically my breeding. Um, we're going to feed these guys here, the baby brine shrimp. We'll feed these guys here, some of the baby brine shrimp as well. And uh, we'll probably feed these guys some of the live uh, brine shrimp if I have enough. If I don't have enough, I won't feed these guys it. Oops, I dropped my... We have a couple more pairs we're going to feed as well. Uh, this is a pair of my breeding. Uh, they're gorgeous. I love these guys. They're my absolute favorites out of everybody I have in here absolute favorites like so unique so beautiful looking and i i believe they are gonna actually spawn soon they are uh, really really uh tending to this cave and and uh yeah it's looking good um uh, actually um someone who purchased a, a couple of fish from this exact spawn um, have told me they've actually already spawned for them so that's really really cool and then we're going to feed these guys here again, hopefully future spawners. And uh, 
they really should produce some that bale's really really shy there it is they really should produce some stunning fry these guys when they do start going hello trevor and uh aqua balls thanks for coming out oh uh, yeah and z there there most definitely is um uh, most definitely is for sure uh lots of risks um I'll show you some of the risks. Well, one of them in particular, and this actually isn't my breeding. This is from, I got this fish from somebody else. This guy right here, this little white fellow. I didn't realize he was that, had that much of a kind of punched up nose when I got him. I call it a pug face. To me, that is a sign of way too much inbreeding. Uh, that's something I don't like. My, my None of my breeding has that. So I think if you, once you start getting the genetics that, that uh, thinned out, you start getting stuff like that. And I, I really don't like that. I don't know if I'm even going to keep that guy for breeding. I think I'd actually rather get something that doesn't have a, a pugged up face. But yes, I have been actually trading with some guys and trying to keep the bloodlines fairly uh, different. And good bloodlines, good bloodlines. Keep stuff that's, that's uh, in good shape. So how I get uh, these out, very simply, I take, I take a, a coffee filter, a reusable coffee filter. I actually have... A brine shrimp sieve right here but I, I don't really like using it I'd rather use this and it I think it works way better and I very simply just run it through I don't go like really fast or anything I just catch what I catch I do that and then I take it over here and I'm actually gonna use the step ladder and they might get shy from this and I'll put it in the water and I'll let you guys see what we caught. So that's, uh, that's all you can see crap right there. So that's what we caught. Now there is some rotifers in there. There's, uh, yeah, all kinds of stuff in there. Just some brine shrimp eggs that didn't even hatch, but there is lots of adult brine and uh, we'll see how they like eating them. I know the answer before we even do this, but a little shy for me being up on the step ladder, but the shyness will end real quickly here. Hmm, they are still being shy doesn't usually happen of course when I have it on camera but maybe they are shy of the camera in the face give them another couple of seconds here they will step away there they go hello Chevy fish Thanks for joining us. Okay, we freaked those guys out by going up on the ladder and doing stuff. So let's try the guys beside them. While we're doing that, maybe those guys won't be freaked out anymore. But essentially, that's all I do. It's not like good for time or anything like that. If you're doing it just for time and efficiency, no. Probably not a good idea, but if you don't really care sometimes and you just want it, even as a treat for your fish, it works out really well. And I find it pretty cool watching my fish eat them. They're out and about while we're gone. So we'll do these guys next to them. There's a whole bunch for them. They're not that shy right after and I think I think this is good for them and I think if they were 
wanting to spawn, they would feel comfortable that there's a food source for their babies. Don't know if they even care about that, to be honest. But let's try and imagine they're that smart. And, uh, you know, that would maybe give them a bit of trust that there is a live food source. That being said, I do not do this for my pair upstairs that spawn constantly. And uh, they never get live brine. They get other treats and whatnot, but they never get live brine. They mostly get pellets and they spawn just fine. But it is just something kind of cool we can do for our fish. Like I said, this uh, this tank setup, it's pretty sustainable. I skip a day once in a while, but uh, all in all, I pretty much always have live adult brine that's gut loaded. That's an important feature people forget. That's gut loaded. And uh, fish like eating it. Although I do believe, since I haven't been YouTubing very much, my fish have become camera shy. Because these guys have cleaned up just about everything while we haven't been here. There we go. These guys will start eating when we walk over here. And this is all I do. This isn't all the fish eat, though. How nobody gets that idea. They mostly eat TDO. TDO chromas, these guys' number one food. All oh, these guys are getting some too. Oh, yeah, this is what I was doing. I actually forgot for a minute. I was putting it in uh, one side here and then just putting lots in and letting them flow through to the end. So uh, that way everybody gets a shot at them before they go out the drain into the sump. So I'm going to try that again here. We're going to put a whole bunch in here and see how many actually make it through by the time they eat it. Right, John? Everybody needs a little treat once in a while. Let's face it, it's got to be boring as hell sitting in that tank. Not a whole lot to do. Except clean your flower pot your only possession in life is a flower pot you gotta clean that why not uh at least have something to chase down for a while and it's fun for me like i said being a little camera shy right now but generally this goes really well and uh they eat it up all real fast there's nothing left now actually if you look around these tanks and they didn't just go down the drain there's really not much left just the ones that figured out how to hide and even here there's not a whole lot making it through to the next to the next one a few are starting to come through i think those guys are just uh picking off most of them these guys really love to eat these guys do too, so we better get some down to them. So, like I said, I enjoy doing this. It's if you're looking at this as like being a commercial breeder and you know, time is money and money's time and blah 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 blah. You won't like this. But if you want to just take some time and enjoy your fish. Enjoy harvesting your own food for your fish. I actually take a little bit of pride in that. I actually take a little bit of pride in being able to harvest food for my fish. And I don't mind these rotifers going in there, guys and gals. I'll tell you why, because they'll come down in here at all my live rock in my, in my uh, sump. Nothing but goodness. 
like I said, there is everything in here. There's rotifers in here. There's copepods in here. Everything. It's the mixing bowl. It's a mixing bowl of green water. This is good. Okay, feed these to these guys over here. I can tell you these guys usually really love it. Probably going to be camera shy. And these guys, I will be honest, aren't overly particular of it. They will eat it. But these guys love it. They just like pig out on it. Look how fat she is. If she doesn't spawn soon, I don't know. Beautiful female. Yeah, good place to get your seeds, Chevy Fish. Good place. But yeah, these guys actually love eating this stuff. If anybody has any questions, by all means, just ask. If I have the answer for you, I'll answer it. And if I don't, there's an awful lot of smart people on here. Somebody else might be able to answer it for you. Nobody's got all the answers. If they tell you, they do. You know, some of their answers might not be very correct because they didn't answer that very correct. All right. Let's see if these guys will eat. They'll eat it. But they really don't care. Not that much. See? Go up and sniff it. So I'll probably just stop feeding it to this bear. If they don't like it, they don't like it. Bottom line. But, yeah, they don't... Uh, this bear doesn't seem to like it. These guys have eaten everything over here. They love it. So now, some will start coming through the the, the screening here of the divider. But yeah, these guys couldn't care less. Still, my most favorite pair. Even when I put in frozen brine for those guys, they couldn't care less. All right, that's everybody that's getting live adult brine but what we're going to do is we're going to uh we're going to harvest this brine so i basically do that bear with me okay give me one second to get situated so all i do is i disconnect it from there I put it over here it's kind of a dark spot i got a coffee can lid and I essentially set up the light so that it, it's a very weak light. The battery's dying, but I try to get it right in there, just down at the base. I don't know. It's not working. Like that. There we go. So I try to put it down like that, and then... Old brine shrimp. So, uh, once I get this situated. Man, man. Never had such a hard time. Try that. That should work. And all the little brines will float their way down towards the light, as you can see there. Do to do. Just looking for my weapon here. Here it is. I gotta clean it out.
So it's starting. It's going to take a couple more minutes. I'm going to leave it a couple more minutes to finish up, but it's almost there actually. But uh, this is what I use to extract the shrimp from there and to feed it. So for all my saltwater fish, uh, honestly, just take the syringe and, and feed it right into the tanks because they're saltwater tanks. It's not going to affect it. Here's Roscoe, everybody. He just came out of his uh, laying down spot with his cone on. He's been utter chaos in here since Roscoe went in to get uh, get the old snip snip. So he hasn't been too happy about this cone, but uh, hopefully we can take it off soon because he runs India. You can see how bent up the cone is. He's not very nice with it. So Roscoe's not having a very good few days here. But he's still wagging his tail. He just turned two a couple weeks ago. Okay. Get that fixed up a bit. All right. I think we're ready to pull some shrimp. Just like that. Like that's quite a bit of shrimp. There's some eggs and it's not perfectly clean. But I haven't been having any problems. The only problem I'm going to have with that is if with really, really, really young fish. Really, really young fish will have problems with eggs. These guys aren't really, really young. These guys... Oh, those guys, these guys are over a month old. So what I like to do is actually spray it back here. Maybe this is the better view. I don't know if you can see, there's the end of it. I like to spray it back here because the, uh, the overflow to go to the sump is right there. So I like to spray them away from it so they have lots of time to eat it. Look how much brine shrimp that is. Here we go. That's a lot of brine shrimp, and they will start going crazy on it. We'll just let them know it's there. These guys will get lots from it. We'll come back to that in one sec. We have an even newer batch here. These guys are so freaking cute. I don't know if you can see them. There you go. These guys are so cute. They're all cute. All right, we'll get the camera back the way it's supposed to be. But to give them a nice little shot too. Want them to eat well. And they will. These guys get uh, TDO chroma as well. There's a couple that escape. They were so small, they could actually get out of the basket. But they're getting lots of shrimp out there. The shrimp will come all the way out there for them as well. It looks like four. Hello, Zen Ginger. Good to see you. So here, there's still some. They will go. They will go and go and go and go. So I really wouldn't feed baby brine to fish any bigger than these guys. Like, I'll give these guys a little shot sometimes, like I can right now. And they'll eat it. Some of the smaller fish will really appreciate it in there. But, uh, yeah, they eat it, but it's really small. I don't know uh, how much they get out of it. I think they'd rather bigger stuff. These guys, on the other hand, there's like a lot of them for one lot there's hundreds in here and these guys these guys are cute as heck too we'll give them their own shot of brine there's a little hippos hungry hungry hippos outside of them maybe not let a whole lot get in the baskets
go. That's how we do it. Oh yeah, lots of babies. Big fat bellies on them. It's really hard to zoom in on this tank. It's really hard. Oh god. Give me one second. Please get focused a bit. It's hard. But anyways, yeah, that's them. Yeah, Zen, they are so cute, eh? This is my favorite size right there. They're never going to be any cuter. They're never going to be any cuter than that. Maybe here. Like, they're still cute here. But they actually start turning into a bit jerks here. So that kind of takes away from their cuteness, the cuteness level. Like, these guys right here are like super high on the cute meter like it's really hard to get much cuter than that so oh i remember before i sit down Look out, Roscoe. I gotta get through. Get that cone head of yours out of the road. Come on, bud. I want to use my ladder there. Oh, you can't go that way. Come on. Come on. Move. You gotta move. Come on. One way or the other, bud. Come on. Why don't you go lay down on your couch? All right. Go that way. Um. Oh, I see some questions here and comments. Yeah, I like them too. I don't get a whole lot of regular, regular ones. Most of mine are quite a bit darker. But yeah, I like them too. There very much is, John. There very much is. It's too easy, Zen. Too easy. Way too easy to get into salt. You can do it. Yeah, poor poor Roscoe got the old snippety snip a couple days ago, so uh, he's uh, not loving life right now. Okay, well, I'll show you guys something. I don't know how well you can see it. You see that plant that's up front and foremost? I already forgot the name of it. I even asked Steve Langley today, and he texted it to me, but I can't get to my text right now because I'm... Uh, on my phone doing this but he texted me the name if we can get around that that guy but that plant right there the leaves coming right at us there okay there's another more examples of it over here with some black beard algae on it but that plant there that plant these are all the same plant right here this plant's got beard algae all over it anywho so in this tank here, this is a 20-gallon cube. Pretty full of plecos and guppies and lots and lots of plants, lots and lots of duckweed. And I've been actually was just going to maintain this tank when I looked above it. And this is what we got, people. That plant has grown right out and flowered. There's little purple flowers on it. Yeah, we'll see if I can do this. This will be like oh, that. So I'll drop that right in there because this is hard to get to. But yeah, it's got all these cool purple flowers on it growing out the back of my aquarium. Sorry for the flip arounds. But isn't that cool? scissors are here because I did some work in here today but yeah it's growing right out of the back look at that nastiness people we're getting rid of some duckweed tomorrow 
But yeah, it grew right out of the back of the tank. Oh, it just fell over this way with uh, out the lid there. But is that ever cool? I thought so, anyways. I thought so. so. As you can see, everybody says you need all kinds of agitation. Everything in a fish tank. Hell, this filter's not even running. Not even running. And uh, this tank is... Uh, who is that? Lucas Bretz? Is he the master of filterless tanks? Well, I guess this would be a bit of a page out of his book. I just threw a female guppy in there that was pregnant. And this is what we ended up with. Same with this tank. She actually had two spawns in this tank without being re-impregnated. And here's some more of their fry as well. This all happened very quickly. But I got some very cool looking. It's just kind of a mystery tank. I got some very cool looking ancestress growing out in here. Got some different uh, calico patterns and whatnot. But anyways, yeah, that's, uh, I thought that was super, super cool. So we're going to try and do this here with one hand. Back into place. There we go. Yeah, Zen, I don't know. I don't know if it's, uh, it's not that. That's not the scientific name of it. Anyways. I'll put it in the comments on this video after I post this video. Okay, it's going to spin around. There we go. Get my hat back on straight. Oh, I forgot to show you. Forgot. Got all ahead of myself here. So we'll spin this back around, actually. I had a plan. I had a purpose for this live stream. And that was to show how I keep this an actual sustainable brine shrimp factory. Okay, so... That's what we got left. I pretty much took like 90%. Get this back to normal here. 90% of the brine shrimp out. Okay. So there might be some eggs in here that haven't hatched yet. And I will give them. I will uh, give them another go. But all I do is literally take out. A shot of brine from the middle water column. We'll put it under the light so we can see it. See if we can see it. Zoom sucks on this. I don't think we can see it well. Anyways, I can see it, and there's like Hundreds of brine. And I literally take that. Bam. Just like that. Shut my light off. It's almost dead. I hooked that up there so uh, it doesn't, gravity doesn't uh, play against us. We're doing this with one hand so if we don't mess it up. Like so. Oh, looks like I broke my air valve. So, so, we'll let that bubble. But, uh, yeah, that's what keeps this sustainable and keeps it working great. I guess a big question is, uh, how, how long does it take? How, how long does it take to get brine shrimp from babies to 
adults. And my answer is, obviously, I don't feed all adults. Some are sub-adults, as you could see when I was feeding. Um, and some are full-out adults that, it's just luck of the draw. Whatever I scoop or, or don't scoop, right? It's not, sorry guys, trying to get this not falling apart. Oh, that's why. Jesus, now we're doing all kinds of stuff. Terrible. Anyways, it's crooked, but that's what we're going to get. Um, but yeah, so they I, they get fed at all life sizes. Um, yeah, so it, it's working for me anyways. Uh, Zen Ginger says, uh, I can't pronounce that name. Yeah, that's not, that's not it. I'll put it in the comments for sure. Um, Steve did text it to me. Or if Steve is on here, if you could please just type it, that would be great. But yeah, I look really cool with those little purple flowers. So it's probably an invasive species or something. All right, Richard says. Hello, Richard. Welcome. Me just now, I wonder what this random live stream will be like. First thing I hear, I just literally take a shot of brine. <laughs> right on, right on. Yeah, I guess it depends where you walk in on my on my live streams, what you're going to hear. Hello, color guppies. Welcome, welcome. Does anybody have any uh, questions? Uh, Zen Ginger's got a, a comment. Uh, sea monkeys live like two years, but I don't know how long it takes before they get to adult size. Yeah, so sea monkeys, that's what they used to call them. Like when some of us were little kids, they were like little scientific things to take home and, and raise them up. But I don't think everybody knew what to feed them and, and whatnot. But uh, essentially, that's what we're doing is stuff that people used to do just for fun. But we're feeding them specific foods so that they're good for our fish when we feed them to our fish. And it takes three weeks. To become an adult, it takes three weeks for a brine shrimp. But yes, they do live a long time. I have actually noticed some of mine carrying balls of eggs, uh, crisps, whatever you want to call them. Um, and like the, they're doing that in there. So they're reproducing even themselves in there, So which is pretty cool. I have no idea if this is your specialty, but do you have a best choice for live non? No, not my specialty, bud. Sorry. No, I don't even know what you're talking about. Non-live Darrow Dow. I'm not. I uh, If I don't know something, I will tell you right off the bat, and I don't know what you're talking about. If you explain it a bit more, maybe I've heard of it, but I, I don't... Uh, Nope, not my specialty. Just tried it, and it seems to be working. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Isrido? I, I maybe nailed it there. Isrido? Uh, I'm not going to go through all of that right now, to be honest, but uh, there's actually some fantastic people on here in the, uh, in the chat that uh, know how to drag up my videos. So... I have several, several videos that are way more in-depth than I will be on a live stream right now, just off the top of my head. I have several, several videos on uh, on breeding clownfish. Uh, Richard says, uh, oh, Daphne. Uh, can't get a hold of live food in Vancouver. Hmm. Yeah, you can. Um I don't know. Oh, Daphnia. Yeah, there's lots around here. There's lots of people with Daphnia cultures around here. Uh, so now that uh, I know you're talking about Daphnia.
but yeah, uh, lots of people are out. Oh, Dario, uh, Scarlet Badis. Hmm. Uh, Microworms. Yeah, Microworms are pretty, uh, and for babies, vinegar eels. Uh, yeah, not my specialty, though. I won't even pretend that it is. Well, there you go. Sorry, I missed this comment. Chevy Fish has got you covered. Told you we got smart people on here. Now, the other thing you can feed them as well, uh, Richard, is you can, if they're that, that small, you can feed them uh, saltwater rotifers. The road furs will live for a little while in fresh water. If you gut load them correctly, they'll they'll uh, take them. But I know people who have had some success with uh, with the microworms. And uh, if you do need, you should be able to order from the United States from Reed Mari Culture if you need any type of the foods or anything to gut load your stuff, Richard. Read my agriculture have been awesome to me. Uh, any problems I've had trying to get anything over the border from Read my agriculture, and I don't get sponsored by them. I don't get sponsored by these guys either, but they're just all good people. And if they're good, I don't mind talking about them. Uh, yeah, so if you have any problems getting your stuff for the border, they're really, really helpful. Really, really helpful there. And uh, yeah, for for a lot of a lot of your aquaculture needs, they've got your stuff out of California. I will say, but it is uh, generally good shipping. Yeah, very good, very good. Well, guys, it's been almost an hour. That's about as long as I can. That's about as long as I'm ever willing to uh, live stream because uh, I just got stuff to do. Uh, but, yeah, I hope you guys got something out of this today. Uh, try it. You know what? It, it's good for your fish. It's really good for your fish. It's uh, a nice alternative, and it's nice to be able to hatch it out yourself. And frankly, other than the salt water and the bubbler, I guess, and the heater, I keep it out of the 78 degrees. I guess I didn't mention that either. Uh, don't cost anything because the brine shrimp I'm going to dump down the sink anyways. So why not squirt it in there, let them grow up, and uh, I feed them when uh, when they're bigger working out so far and we'll see if uh maybe my maybe my uh, clownfish eggs will be healthier not necessarily because there's lots of things about clownfish breeding that i think get under appreciated under thought of um uh, and i think what is the health of the eggs why sometimes when you have a batch of eggs, you go to hatch them out and like, bam, all of them hatch. And next thing you know, you got 350 larvae in your tank. And then you're like, what the hell am I going to do with 350 larvae? A lot of water changes is what you're going to do. But that aside, sometimes you go, bam, damn, 20 hatched. What the heck, right? Like it's it's not very consistent and so that leads me to start looking in other areas in those areas are well how healthy were the eggs what did i feed the parents before they laid those eggs and if your fish are, are breeding regularly you can lose track of when they're actually gestating because they're actually gestating really early. Like they're, they're almost after they just laid the first batch. You got almost continue and mine go like every 13 days, my pair upstairs. So you just got to continually hammer the food to them. 
you know, maybe it, sometimes I've heard feeding too much shrimp based foods, shrimp, like, like normal shrimp based foods can lead to your eggs being hurt, having hurt eggs that don't hatch very well. Maybe there's other foods that do that too. Maybe there's, so I try to offer a bit of variety. So these are different things to think about as well, other than just, you know, what, what you can feed them after they've hatched. What do we need to feed them before they've been laid to give them the absolute best start? Uh, can't get rotifers in time. First time hatching maroon clownfish looking for an alternative food source. Uh, there is not one. There is not one. I'm sorry. I'm, if I could give you some advice on that, I would. But for uh, the maroons, there just is not an alternative food source. I'll give you something to try. You try this. Don't hate me if it doesn't work because it may not work. I'm telling you that right off the bat. But I'm going to try and help you out here. Try just straight up spirulina powder like I showed at the start of the video. What you're going to do with that is you're going to put, take a bottle, like a pop bottle. You're going to pour in like half, half a, 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 a teaspoon, not a tablespoon, half a teaspoon into that bottle. You're going to put some salt water in that bottle and you're going to shake the shit out of it. Shake it up really good, really, really good. So it's, it's literally green water. And then you're going to add that the next morning after they hatch. And uh, I've had success with that when I have not had rotifers. But that is not with maroons. Maroon clawfish have smaller babies than ocelaris. So your maroons may not take to that. You could also try baby brine shrimp. I mean, fresh hatched like what I just fed in here. You can try that, but I don't think maroons will accept it. They're too, too small. Rotifers is what you need, and if you don't have rotifers, I'm going to say your chances for success are extremely limited. But try the spirulina, it will sometimes eat it. I've had success on one batch doing that before, and it wasn't like success like rotifer success, it was success like okay, we got a few out of the batch. So that's all I can offer you for an alternative. Essentially, there's not an alternative, and this is why not everybody breeds clownfish regularly. So, yeah, that's uh, that's that for alternatives. I'm, I am working on another alternative, but again, I don't know if it would work on maroons, and I'm not willing to share that information yet uh, until I, I am more secure with uh, the outcome of it that's something i something i'm trying to do here with uh with my channel and that is i don't want to pass advice along if it's not tried testing the truth by me i'm not going to talk about somebody else's ideas uh, i'm not going to I don't want to. I don't want to show you what I've created or what I'm trying to do when I, I I'm not. I, I don't know what the consistent results are going to be because uh, that happens on here a lot. Way too much on on YouTube and stuff. People get an idea, they go with it, bam, hit YouTube, and they're actually they're actually like people actually like them, and they have lots of subscribers and stuff. So it gets out there, and lots of people see it. But they never actually tested it. They never actually tested it like longer than it took to make that video. So everybody goes out and tries it and realizes it's shit. Realizes it doesn't work. So I don't know. I don't want to do that. So uh, when I have stuff tried, tested, and true to my satisfactory standards, then I will release it uh, with my words. Jesse and Nicole is what JN stands for. Well, welcome. Uh, good to be seen. And uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully uh, uh, has something of value for you here. 
Yeah, but that's yeah, that's where J N comes from is Jesse and Nicole. Because a lot of you don't know is Nicole Nicole doesn't ever come on video. She don't like being on video. She thinks this is silly. She don't like it. Uh, but what she does do is feed a lot of fish when I'm not home. Uh, when I'm at work and not home and, and whatnot. She's the one down here. These uh like this breeding clownfish thing isn't a, a cakewalk. Like there's a lot of stuff that's gotta be done. I do all the heavy lifting. I do all the water changes. I do all the I do most of it. Nicole turns our own water on and off, which you may not think is much, but that is very good until I get a better float system set up. So she makes sure I always got RO water to do my water changes and whatnot, which is awesome. And she also feeds these babies. Some of these babies we feed up to seven times a day. And uh, sometimes she feeds them five of those seven times a day. So uh, uh, the N of JN actually does quite a bit around here. Even though you guys don't see it on camera. Well, you're welcome. And uh, yeah, check those videos out. They actually made that those videos about raising and breeding clownfish. Like, I kind of, I really blew what I was going to do on YouTube with those because I don't need to make a, a live stream about most of this because I've already done it on those videos and I was very strategic in how I. You can literally watch those videos from the time I did it the first time, from the very first time I ever hatched a clownfish baby. I documented my experience of that. And then watch one when I was kind of like, I got this. Watch one of those videos. And those ones are way more in-depth, way more, I'm going to say decisive. They're way more exactly of what I was talking about, my little rant a few minutes ago about being tried, tested, and true. The later videos are tried, tested, and true. The first videos I was mere, and I did state in them, merely documenting this is my first time doing this, this is how it went. So, if you wanna skip all the mistakes and crap I did, skip those first videos I did and go to the later ones, uh, or watch those first videos I did and see what mistakes I made and don't make them. Either way. Um, they're there to help, and uh, they're mainly there for me to document my first experience trying to breed clownfish. Hello, lunatic fringe. Welcome, welcome. Well, guys and gals, I think uh, this is going to be a wrap. I've uh, done my Done a solid hour here, and I'm pretty sure other people are going to have some uh, live streams coming on here very shortly. So we've covered the topic that I set out to cover. And uh, I think it was a success. I think it was a success. I think I showed how it did. I think I showed how easy it is to do. Easy. That like, this is like, for anybody that talks about sustainability and being resourceful or trying to lessen our impact on the environment, all this stuff, do this. Because I'm using shrimp, I'm gonna dump down the sink to grow into larger shrimp for a larger food source for my fish. Therefore, I'm not getting, going out and purchasing food. I'm not having to have that food shipped around the world to me. Everything else, blah, 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 blah. We just lessened our footprint and we've reused something that we're just gonna throw it anyways. So, thank you everybody for joining, and until next time, happy fish keeping everybody. Take care.